All right, in this video, I'm going to go through the first review packet for the similarities unit, uh, starting with number one. The accompanying diagram shows two similar triangles. Which proportion can be used to solve for x? Uh, so I'm looking for consistency here, right? A big side over a corresponding small side equals another big side over another corresponding small side, or vice versa. I can do a small side over a big side that corresponds to it, or another small side is equal to another big side that corresponds to it. So the first thing I look at is, I'm going to go through each of my answer choices starting with A. That's saying x over 24, so the bottom side over the left hand side of the big triangle is equal to the left hand side over the bottom side, so that's inconsistent. You know, it's got to be the same proportion on each side. It's not big, small, or small, big. But for B, it's saying that big side of 24 over the side that would correspond to that in the other triangle is the 9, if I look at the placement, is equal to, and then it goes back to the small triangle, 15. Small over the corresponding side of the bigger triangle. So big over small is not equal to small over big. But if I get to choice 3, I notice that takes 32, over the corresponding 12, and then it goes back to the big triangle equals x over the corresponding 15. So that would be big over small equals big over small. So that's a consistent proportion that matches up the correct corresponding sides. For number two, in the following diagram, BC is parallel to DE. If AB is 21, BD is 7, BC is 15, which of the following lengths is DE? Well, when I have overlapping triangles, I like to redraw them. So I'm going to draw the small, smaller triangle, ABC. This isn't drawn to scale, but it gets the idea across. With the bottom side is 21, and BC is 15. And I'm going to draw the bigger triangle over here, to the best of my abilities. Um, that's A, D, E. And the reason I'm redrawing it is because they're overlapping, and it might be hard to notice that that entire length AD is 21 plus 7. So I'm not going to use that 7 in my proportion because that's actually not the side length of a triangle. It's just given to me to help find all of AD. And I'm looking for that ED right there. So I'm going to do a corresponding small side over a corresponding big side equals a corresponding small side over a corresponding big side. So 21 over 28 equals 15 over x. Now any proportion that when you cross multiply and multiply 15 and 28 and 21 and x is going to be a correct proportion. So even if your proportion looks a little different but you end up at the same conclusion that's still a correct proportion. So the missing value DE here is just 20. Number three. If a triangle has side lengths 12, 14, and 18 what is the perimeter of a similar triangle after a dilation with a scale factor of 2? So if there's a scale factor of 2, I'm just going to take each of these sides and double their length. So the 12 is going to turn into a side length that's 24, the 14 is going to turn into a side length that's 28, and the 18 is going to turn into a side length that's 36. And if I add all those together to get the perimeter, that's just going to be 88. For number four, which of the following transformations represents a dilation? In terms of the operation you should be thinking about, you should be thinking about multiplication by a constant scale factor or division by a constant scale factor. Because division is pretty much the same thing as multiplication. Like if I'm dividing by two or multiplying by one half, that's the same effect. Now this looks like a bump double switch, so that's not a dilation. This is just switching a sign, but you're not multiplying both of them by it. This looks like you added 3 to the 8 and added 3 to the 4, so that's not going to work. But here to get from 8 to 4, you can multiply by a half. And to get from 4 to 2, you can multiply by that same constant scale factor. So the scale factor to get from 8, 4 to 4, 2 must have been 1 half. Number 5. In the diagram below, AC and DE intersect at B. If angle D is congruent to angle E, AD is 6, EC is 10, and 
BC is 12.5, that's what that should say, find the length of AB. Well, the reason they tell me angle D and angle E are the same is so that I could look at these vertical angles as well and make an argument that the triangles are similar by angle-angle. Remember, if triangles are similar, then their sides are in proportion. So I'm going to take AD, say that corresponds to EC, and AB must then correspond to BC. Try to picture it if I were to rotate that around B, BC would line up with AB there. So I'm going to set up a proportion, a small side over its corresponding big side equals a small side over its corresponding big side. If I cross multiply there 10x, 12.5 times 6 is 75, and if I divide out the 10, I find that x is equal to 7.5. In number 6, in triangle LMN shown below, medians, uh oh, I'm thinking about a 2 to 1 ratio now, are drawn from L to M to points P and Q respectively. So there's a whole median and there's a whole median. If MQ is equal to 60, then which of the following is the length of just MR? Well, if the whole length is 60, you got to think about if I want to break it up into a 2 to 1 ratio, that's three pieces all together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 60 and divide it by 3 to find the length of each of my pieces. So that means the smaller piece QR must be 20 and the larger piece RM must be two groups of 20, 40. The reason that occurs is because there should be a 2 to 1 ratio here. The reason I know 40 to 20 is a 2 to 1 ratio is because if I divide both of them by 20, 40 divided by 20 is 2, and 20 divided by 20 is 1. So that's just saying one piece is double the other, and MR, the two pieces compared to the one, is just 40. Now for a very similar problem, in the diagram below, points E and D are the midpoints of sides AC and BC. So if that's a midpoint, it's really telling you BE is a median, and AD is a median as well, because it goes from a vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. So I'm still thinking about the 2 to 1 ratio here. What's the perimeter of triangle DEF? Well, they tell me AD is 30. And again, if I want to break that into a 2 to 1 ratio, I'm going to break it into three pieces by dividing it by 3. Put the smaller piece uh, between the midpoint and the centroid. Double that, put the bigger piece between the vertex and the centroid. It tells me the whole length BE there is 24. Again, I'm going to do the same trick, where if I want to partition it into a 2 to 1 ratio, I'm going to divide it by 3, get 8, put 8 there, and 16 there. So I've got two sides, um, and they tell me that BA, or where do they say, AB is 28, right? And the relationship between this side and ED, a segment that connects the midpoints, is that it's still a 2 to 1 ratio because these triangles are similar. So I can just take half of 28 to find that the missing side length ED is 14. So when I add 8, uh -oh, plus 10, plus 14, that should get me my entire perimeter of 32. For number 8, which of the following statements is true? Well, again, if these triangles are similar because they both have a right angle and they share angle A, I'm looking for consistency. So let's see. I'm going to start with A. AC, a small side, over AE, its corresponding big side, all right, that looks pretty good, equals Wait a minute, AD is a side of the big triangle, so I know that's not going to work out. So that can't be true. But if I go to B, AB, a small side, over its corresponding big side AD, well, let's see, I should start with the small side again. BC, that's a small side, over its corresponding big side DE. 
So that must be my consistent proportion because it's small over big equals small over big. Number nine, in the diagram shown, altitude AC is drawn to BD. If AD equals 12, DB equals 16, oh, wish I gave myself more room here, find the length of DC. Well, you need to ask yourself, it's a right triangle with an altitude dropped. So is this going to be one of those hills proportions or one of those SAS proportions? The question you should ask yourself is, do we know any information about the altitude? Do we want to find him? Is he labeled as X? Or do we know the number of the length of AC? The answer to both those questions is no, I don't care about AC. So I'm not going to have my altitude in a proportion here. I must have a hills proportion. So the entire hypotenuse is 16. And when I talk about my legs, your legs are on the outside of the triangle, of that big right triangle. So that's leg one and leg two, as opposed to side one and side two. So when I set this proportion up, my hypotenuse is 16 over one of my legs, which is 12. And now if that's the leg I use in that part of the proportion, it's the same leg in the other part of proportion. And the side that corresponds to that leg is exactly what I'm looking for. That's x. So notice leg 1 goes with side 1 and leg 2 goes with side 2. But I actually don't know any information about side 2 and leg 2, so I'm not even going to use them. Again, if I cross multiply, 16 times x is 16x. 12 times 12 is 144. And if I divide out the 16, I find that x is equal to 9. Now for something a little bit more challenging. A flagpole casts a shadow that is 160 feet long. I'm just going to sketch that picture right now. There's my shadow. We got a flagpole right there. Some sort of flag. And the entire length of the shadow is 160 feet long. At the same time, a boy who is 5 feet tall is standing 140 feet from the base of the flagpole so that his edge of the edge of a shadow coincides with the edge of the flagpole shadow. Well, that corner is the base of the flagpole. So maybe the boy is somewhere over here where the distance between him and that flagpole is 140 feet. In which case the edge of both their shadows should be 20 feet because that's just the remaining distance of that 160. 20 plus 140 is 160. And I also know that he's 5 feet tall. And the question is, find the number of feet in the height of the flagpole. Well, if you try to visualize this, these guys are actually kind of creating two similar right triangles. Where if I sketch them without the pole, that big side is 160, and the man is 5 feet tall, and his shadow is only 20, meter, 20 feet long. So I can actually set up a proportion using this information. I could say the boy's shadow over the flag shadow, small over big, equals the boy's height over the flag's height, small over big. So again, even though this is an application, it's still just setting up a proportion, cross multiplying, and dividing out to find that our missing piece here is 40 feet. And that should make sense because that's bigger than the boy's height. You can always check. <sighs> you can always check with a scale factor, right? To get from 20 to 60, 160, I can multiply by 8. And to get from 5 to 40, I can also multiply by 8. So that checks out that the scale factor is constant. For number 11. MN has endpoints negative 8, negative 5, and 2, 0. Remember when you plot those points to connect them with the straight edge so that your work is as precise as possible because it really makes a difference for these partitioning problems. All right? And I want to find a point Q such that it segments MQ to QN into a 3 to 2 ratio which means I'm going to segment it, partition it into five pieces altogether. Now, there's an algebraic portion you could do here, but my argument is that the graphical portion is a lot easier to work with. 
I'm going to make this into a right triangle here with MN as my hypotenuse. I'm going to make that horizontal distance right there between M and N and draw up that vertical distance right there. Now if I count the boxes, I'll call that point O, between M and O, that's actually 10 units long. And I'm going to just segment that bottom piece right there into five equal parts. To segment something that is 10 units long into five equal parts, each part should be two units long. So every two boxes, I'm going to make a tick mark. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And if it's a three to two ratio, I go to my third one in. That would give me three equal parts. And two equal parts on the other side, I can go straight up. And there's point Q right there. So if I count where Q is, that's two to the left and two down at negative two comma two. For number 12, in the following diagram, CF is parallel to DG. Segment GE has a length that is 4 inches greater than the length of FG. So what that means is that if I label FG as X, 4 inches greater is just going to be 4 plus X, or X plus 4. I'm going to keep reading. If CD equals 15 inches, and CE equals 36 inches, then determine the length of GE. So that x plus 4 piece right there. Well, I have that 36, so I could do 36 and subtract away the 15 I know to find the length of DE to be 21. And because I know DG and CF are parallel, I can apply a side splitter theorem here. I can do part over part equals part over part. Now this is not the only way to set up this proportion. x over x plus 4 equals 15 over 21. You could also recognize that this whole side length should be x plus x, which is 2x plus 4. And you could do a similar triangle proportion, but just to keep my numbers a little smaller, I'm going to use the side splitter here. So x times 21 is just 21x. And remember, if I'm multiplying 15 to x plus 4, I'm going to have to distribute that because I'm multiplying one term to two terms. So that's 15x. 4 times 15 is 60. If I subtract my 15x over, because I'm going on the other side of the equal sign, I'm trying to collect all my x's together. 15x minus 15x is 0. And 21 minus 15 is just 6. And if I divide out the 6, I find that my length of x is 10. Now be careful here. That's actually the length of fg. But I label ge to be x plus 4. So really, if I add 4 to that, the length of ge here is 10 plus 4, or just 14. So just be careful about what they're looking for there. Number 13. Given xy is perpendicular to yr, and SR is perpendicular to YR, prove triangle SXYZ is similar to triangle SRZ. So I'm going to make a statement column. S stands for statements, and R stands for reasons. I'm going to rewrite my givens, and then I'll think about how that helps me. XY is perpendicular to YR, and SR is perpendicular to YR. The reason I know that is because it's given. Well, remember that perpendicular lines form congruent right angles. So I can mark a box at Y and a box at R. If I'm trying to prove two triangles are similar, my goal should be to show that they have two congruent angles. So I'm going to start with angle Y is congruent to angle R because perpendicular lines form congruent right angles. I'm using some abbreviations here that you can feel free to use on a test, or you can write out the words. But I still need another angle. And any time I see two lines intersecting, I always want to look for vertical angles. So angle XZY should be congruent to angle SZR. So I'm going to label that as angle 1 and angle 2. And I'll say angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 simply because vertical angles 
are congruent. And that's enough to say these two triangles are similar. So I'm just going to say triangle X, Y, Z is similar to triangle S, R, Z because of angle, angle. So it's always just going to be proving two angles congruent to show that I have similar triangles. And for number 14, I'm given that FG is parallel to HG, and I want to prove some proportion is true. I want to prove that when I divide EH and EF, that's the same constant as when I divide EJ and EG. Well, remember that if my triangles were to be similar, then the sides would be in proportion. So a strategy for me is I want to prove the triangle EFG, the top triangle, is similar to triangle EHJ. And then I can just say that corresponding sides of similar triangles are in proportion. So let's try that here. I'll restate my givens. I know that FG is parallel to HJ, because that's given. And anytime I give you parallel lines, you should be looking for congruent alternate interior or congruent corresponding. Now, I notice that angle E is reflexive here. It's shared by both triangles. You could use that in your proof if you want to, but I notice that angle EFG and angle EHJ are congruent corresponding angles, and angle EJGF and angle EJH are also congruent corresponding angles. So because those are the same reason, I can lump those into the same statement, and that's actually going to save me a step in my proof. So I could say angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and I could say angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. What's my reason for that? Parallel lines form congruent corresponding angles. And the reason I know those are corresponding, visually what I try to see is that if I take that angle and I slide it up the transversal, I translate it, it'll land right on top of the other angle. So if you notice, we've already proven two pairs of angles are congruent here. So that's enough to say that my top triangle EFG is similar to triangle EHJ by angle angle. And they just asked me to prove that proportion right there. So that's just one extra step to say that EH divided by EF is congruent or equal to EJ over EG simply because corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. Now you'll notice that's a lot to write. So if you want to, you're welcome to use the acronym CSSTP. Just remember what that stands for. Corresponding sides of similar triangles are in proportion.